Hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to share the books that I read in December, my December reading wrap up. It's shocking that we're at the end of another year. Also structuring this wrap up a little differently, not a huge difference. You shouldn't even notice. You probably wouldn't. The only reason you will is because I'm telling you. I read eight books this month and six of them were new to me books and two were rereads. I left the rereads until the end of the month, but I want to talk about them first because I'm not going to share like too much thoughts. It wasn't like a huge like debate like, oh, I rated it five stars the first time and I hated it this time or anything. The first book that I reread is Harry Potter and the Sword Sorcerer's Stone. This time I read the illustrated edition, which was super fun. Juggling this in bed at night was a challenge, you guys. And I needed much more light because the pages are so big and just to see the illustrations and stuff like that. If I read any of the other illustrated editions, which I plan to in the new year, 2020, then I will definitely have to have another book going so I can read a different, smaller, more manageable book in bed at night, which is when I do the majority of my reading. But in the afternoon when my husband's playing the switch and I'm just sitting on the chaise and reading this, it was a really great reading experience and I probably read 50% of this on Christmas Day. I think it took me like four days to read total and that's just because at night I wasn't able to read a lot and it's funny because I checked the first time I read it and it also took me four days so I'm not sure but that's what it ended up being. So anyway I'm not gonna leave it a rating or anything like that. I do enjoy the Harry Potter series but I just keep hearing more and more things about the author and it's a shame. I'm just gonna leave it at that but yeah I reread this. I really enjoyed my reread especially reading the illustration edition. My last reread of the month is The Giver by Lois Lowry and I have several copies of The Giver because it's my favorite book of all time. If you didn't know that, hi, you must be new to my channel because I talk about this book being my favorite since I've read it. Um, it's been a couple of years since I've read it but I'm so glad that I just decided to pick it up and finish it, like reread it this year, like at the end of the year. Um, it's a very short book. It's only like 180 pages and I think that's one of the reasons why I like it so much. I like it for several different reasons. It's hard to like put into words exactly why. I love it because it's a short book that has a fully fleshed out complete story. Um, I also like that the language and the writing is very concise and to the point and it's not like flowery and it doesn't go on these like long descriptors but it's introducing a totally new topic of this utopian world where we have basically eliminated pain and weather and basically anything and we have all moved to sameness and it's been like that for a very long time. So the people in this community don't even know anything about you know rainbows and snow and you know things like they're just used to things that the way they are and um there's this one child that at the age of 12 he gets selected to be the new receiver and then the old receiver now titled the giver gives him all the memories of the past and i just think it's so meticulously and thoughtfully written that I think anyone can enjoy this story from like young children to older adults. I think at the age that you read it, you'll get different things out of it, obviously. But I just think it was so strong because you really get a sense of the characters in a short amount of time, the world that they're living in, the thoughts and the feelings of the main character and the giver. And I don't know, it's just... I just love it so much. So yeah, I reread this and I'm so happy that I did. Yeah, I just hope to continue rereading it in the future. Okay, now let's jump on to some new books that I actually read. The first one that I actually read in December is We Met in December by Rosie Curtis. I think a lot of people are gonna be reading this this month or have read this this month um, just because like it has December in the title, the cover looks really Christmassy, and that's exactly why I picked it up. Unfortunately, it didn't give me those Christmas 
Christmassy vibes that I wanted. I rated this story three out of five stars. I thought it was good. It just didn't like grip me. It was just like a good story. You know, nothing was inherently wrong with it. It was just quite predictable. Um, it's about our main character, I forget her name, Jess, that moves to London to live with these four other people in this house that her friend um, Becky, her grandmother's place, like Becky inherited the place from her grandmother. She's adjusting to London and so forth and she befriends the people in the house and a romance blossoms and stuff like that. The main storyline is that um, on the night that she eventually moves to London, gets to the house, she meets um, another roommate, Alex, and she feels this like magnetic bond to him um, on the very first night that they meet and she feels like he feels it too. But then she takes this like two week vacation for the new year um, to go off with her friends and when she comes back she finds out that Alex and another housemate, um, Emma, hooked up while they were away. So of course like she's not trying to get in the middle of that and she has her own things that she's dealing with and trying to adjust to a new job and a new city and so forth. But Alex and Jess told in alternating chapters in the story build a friendship and it goes from there. It takes place over a year's time from December to December and then there is an epilogue that takes place a year after the whole story. So it was good. Nothing was wrong with it. It just didn't give me those Christmassy vibes that I really wanted. So the cover is a bit misleading in my opinion. Okay, the next book that I picked up, I'm so glad that I picked it up this month. It's The One by John Mars. And I got this recommendation from Gabby at Gabby Reads. You guys know I love her channel. She's like one of my favorite booktubers. But I heard her talk about The Passengers by John Mars and then she picked this up. And between the two books, they're both sci-fi. I was a little hesitant because I don't like sci-fi, but reading the synopsis and like hearing her talk about this, I really wanted to give it a try. And guys, I am so happy that I did. Um, this book, we live in a world where you could take a DNA test and find who you're genetically matched with, like who you're the one is, like who you're supposed to be with and is your perfect match. Um, so in this world, people, some people take the DNA test, some people don't, but because of the repercussions of finding out like who you're genetically made for. Um, you know, it's kind of like it breaks up couples and things like this. But in this story, we follow five different people as they find out who they're genetically matched with and the results of that. The most awesome part of this is how it's written. So like I said, you're following the five different people. I wrote their names down here, Mandy, Christopher, Jade, Nick, and Ellie. And I will just show you how like fast paced this story is. So every chapter is an alternating chapter from one of the five different people that you're following. Um, and it just goes by so quickly, but every chapter is so interesting, but the chapters are literally just pages. So right here, chapter one, Mandy, and we just have a couple of pages. And then you go into the next perspective of Christopher, a couple of pages and then you are in Jade's point of view. So the story is told like that, but every little mini chapter is so interesting that you don't wanna move on to someone else, but every single point of view is so interesting that you're just like flying through the chapters to find out what happens. I read this so quickly. I would highly recommend if you like sci-fi stories with a little bit of element of romance, thriller, it just had like, it was thrilling, it was sad, it was cute, it was shocking, it was just like so good. So yeah, I definitely recommend this. And also I think I'm gonna be picking up The Passengers now because I loved this so much. But I rated this five out of five stars. Next book that I picked up this month is The Wives by Taryn Fisher. And I've talked about this in my most disappointing reads of the year. Yes, I was really disappointed by this book. I was really looking forward to it. I've only read one other Taryn Fisher book um, I rated this three out of five stars. Um, the beginning half of the story was more engaging than the second half. I guess I should tell you what the book is about. So this book is about a man that has three different wives, but the wives are not in like contact with each other. It's basically like a polygamous relationship where they don't live in the same house. So he travels to different wives, different days of the week, and they're not like, they don't make contact with each other. He can discuss the wives with his other wives, but 
they don't really, the wives don't know each other, but the narrator of the story is Thursday, one of the wives, and Thursday finds a slip of paper in her husband's like pocket when she's doing laundry or something like that. And she sees a name and she gets really intrigued and starts looking her up and then she goes to visit her and all of this and things just like go from there. And in the back or on the synopsis on the inside, it actually talks about like how she goes to meet the wife and there's bruises, but like she's shocked about it because like, she doesn't have any bruises and she's wondering like why are there bruises on my husband's other wife like what's going on you just have an idea in your head like it being Taryn fisher it being a little bit of a thriller like you're just like please don't be this and it's that so i was disappointed that i called it like so early and for that reason i really enjoyed the first half over the second half once like kind of the reveal happens and once the reveal or it's not even really a reveal i've watched other people talk about this book but like i guess i just seen it coming so far in advance that once it happened i was just kind of like let down and it was just predictable and i just didn't like the second half of the book at all but the first half was really strong and i hope to read books by her in the future that are more like the first half of this book anyway watch other people's opinion some people were more shocked by it and enjoyed it a bit more i was just really let down because i like kind of called it a mile away. The next story I read is Regretting You by Colleen Hoover. This just released this month. I got it on release day because I pre-ordered it and I'm so happy I did. Um, this isn't like, it is kind of a typical Colleen Hoover book. It deals with romance and it's a little hard hitting. There's a little bit deeper of a story there, but this isn't just like a man and a woman fall in love and that's the story, that's the romance. I ended up rating the story five out of five stars. It's told in, well, it starts actually chapter one is 17 years prior to the rest of the story when Morgan our main one of our main characters find out she's pregnant after that chapter two it's 17 years later and it's told in alternating chapters between Morgan the mother and Clara her daughter and Morgan and Clara I think they're just like typical teenage mom relationships where they like butt heads and they disagree on everything and stuff like that and Clara's dad Morgan's husband Chris is kind of like the family anchor but then one day there's this horrific accident um, that leaves a lot of questions and both women um, both ladies are like trying to deal with the grief and like sift through their feelings and move forward at the same time and there is romance of course I absolutely loved it I also liked the relationship of the mother and the daughter it felt different to me um, because it was following the mother and the daughter and the daughter is only 16 you know so it dealt with some younger love some older love like I just loved it <laughs> next book I picked up is um, Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. I was a little bit hesitant to pick this up because I've heard that it's like their weakest work, but, and it says that it's their first women's fiction, but it felt very much like other books that I've read by them, and I've read a lot of books by them now. Um, I rated the story five out of five stars. Um, I really like it because it's kind of told in a past and present type thing. Um, our main character, Macy, she's settling into like her new life, and she's just moving ahead with a guy and a job and like the future and stuff like that. But then someone from her past, she bumps into them and all these feelings get rekindled. And I guess it was her first love. And you basically find out like what happened, because there's something brewing underneath like what happened between these two, what made them separate when they seem to have like such this magnetic like connection. Possibly my favorite Christina Lauren. It's so hard because I really love this and like two others and it's hard to like put it in order super cute also it's dealing with grief because um macy lost her mother when she was young and but her mother left this like list for the dad like when this happens do this and at this age talk about this so it also just had that in it as well and it was just so well done i like loved it i loved the romance i loved how it was told like 
oh, I had so many feelings while reading this book, like personal, like I can relate feelings. And oh, I just, this is probably my favorite Christina Lauren book, let's be honest. The very last thing that I read out of everything that I've already talked to you about is a poetry collection sent to me by the poet herself. This is The Shades of Missing You by Veronica Tugalevi. I just have the best luck when it comes to like reading poetry because I picked this up at the perfect time. I basically had it for like probably more than a month in my possession. And I guess after I did my December book haul and it was just kind of sitting there and I was organizing books to go on my shelf and everything, I thought I can read this like so quickly. Um, it's done in this like black and white with photography style um, and it's modern poetry. So it's short and quick. Um, so impactful. I plan to do a full review of this telling you the good, the bad, and the ugly, which I'll tell you now, there's not a lot of bad or ugly, but there is a lot of good in this collection. Um, but yeah, so look forward to that review possibly in the new year. I have already reviewed it, I believe on Goodreads and Amazon. So if you're really interested in my thoughts, just check out my Goodreads or my Amazon. Um, but yeah, that's the last thing that I managed to read after I did my rereads. But that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're all having a lovely day or night. Let me know some of your favorite books that you read this month in the comment section down below. Also, I'm curious, do you guys reread books? Because I'm not a huge rereader, but I think I was inspired by people making end of the year content. So they reread their favorites through the, like from earlier in the year or from previous years. And it helped them not read new books so that they could concentrate on this new exciting content for you guys. Wait, I'll talk to you guys again soon in my new video. Bye.